Hello, it's great to present here at SCALE. My name is Nabila Babur, and I'm an engineering manager currently working on bringing generative AI workflows into GitHub. Previously, I was leading Azure AI Studio as a product leader, which is Microsoft's flagship product for building generative AI applications for developers. Over the past year, we've observed the generative AI market transitioning from experimentation to scale. During this shift, developers are discovering that generative AI can address more complex problems than single LLM calls or simple RAG solutions. As we explore leveraging generative AI, especially with the rise of multimodal models, agent-based systems have emerged. These systems utilize multiple single function agents working together to solve a complex task. In this talk, I'm defining an agent as a skill. It usually combines a language model with a special instruction or a system prompt to do a task. It can have functions in the LLM call or just connected APIs. The simplest way to think about an agent is that it is a helper with a specific talent. Multi-agent systems are just as the name implies, multiple agents working together to solve a more complex task than a single specific agent can solve. Often a multi-agent system will have different agents that are both calling the same LLM, but they have different system prompts or a specific skill with that is more deterministic. The key is knowing when to call which agent and with which parameters. Agent-based applications have three primary workflows. The first one is a fixed workflow. These are straightforward and predictable. They operate as a sequence of steps, much like a flowchart. The workflow is excellent for processes that are well-defined and they don't require deviation from the plan. They're like a tried and tested recipe that constantly delivers the same result, which is great for reliability and ease of debugging. The second is a partially dynamic workflow. These workflows offer a blend of structure and flexibility. Certain steps are fixed, while others are dynamically selected based on context. This approach allows an application to maintain a level of control while also adapting to specific needs. It balances predictability with the ability to handle complex tasks. The third is a fully dynamic workflow. This is at the opposite end of the spectrum, offering the maximum flexibility. At the completion of each step, the application dynamically determines the next move based on an LLM call. It's like navigating a city without a map, making decisions at each intersection, and this adaptability allows for highly customized responses, but as you can see, it also introduces a layer of unpredictability that can make understanding and debugging the workflow more challenging. As you orchestrate an agent-based application, the complexity scales with the number of agents involved. It's critical to ensure that the right agent is called upon at the right moment within the workflow. A mishap here can cascade, introducing errors that need to be addressed. It's a lot like miscommunication in a large team project that requires additional effort to resolve. Effective orchestration is the key to creating an efficient agent-based system. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some examples in the market of these types of workflows. Simple RAG or grounding the model on your data is an example of a fixed workflow. The process starts when a user poses a question. The system always searches its knowledge base to retrieve information, functioning much like a librarian who looks up book references. The retrieved data is then packaged and it's fed into the LLM. The LLM processes this enriched prompt and generates a response, which is then delivered to the user. The sequence of these steps remains constant. A user question triggers a knowledge search. The results are then integrated into the LLM prompt and an answer is produced. This workflow is fixed because it consistently follows this pattern, reliably fetching the top X search results, even if they're not perfect match. The advantage here is the simplicity of troubleshooting because of its fixed nature. An example of a partially dynamic workflow that is in the market today is the Azure OpenAI Assistance API. It has a blend of fixed and dynamic workflows. It can access files, it maintains persistent conversation threads, and it calls upon various tools to assist users. For example, Code Interpreter, which is one of its tools, can answer questions by writing code, executing it, and giving a response. 
You can add functions to call external APIs. You can query data or input, uh, or input files for retrieval. Think of this as when I call a step in a workflow, I'm going to call a few agents in deterministic order to solve a larger task. The larger task has parts of the workflow that are fixed. For example, one of the tools that the Assistance API supports is writing and executing code. Let's say that the agent dynamically decides that it needs to write code to solve a problem, as we can see in the diagram here. It calls a code writer to write code, which is number three. It then follows a determined series of agent calls. Once the code writer is done, it calls the code runner to run the code. Once it runs the code, it asks the third agent, the checker, did the code solve the problem? If yes, move on. If no, it repeats the sequence based on the error and it iterates until it's right. These partially dynamic orchestration workflows tend to be the most effective in the market today. Using frameworks like Autogen, Langchain, or Semantic Kernel introduce fully dynamic systems. They plan their next action deterministically using an LLM, offering high customization and flexibility. But that has a cost. This can introduce unpredictability to your application. With the Assistance API that we saw earlier, you don't write or modify any of the intermediate prompts. It's a managed service where you can simply toggle features on or off, but the features aren't as customizable to your unique scenario or use case. In a fully dynamic system, they are. Experimenting with dynamic systems help you identify which processes to fix, and this will give you a balance of flexibility and consistency in your workflow. Ultimately, as the complexity of your system grows, the need for advanced debugging tools becomes critical. Next, I'm going to cover a few fun examples of what could go wrong when building an agent-based application. For example, sometimes the agents chat back and forth almost aimlessly, as we can see here. The answer is generated, but the agent don't know when to quit. For example, the first agent saying the current time in Seattle is, thank you for providing the information. You're welcome. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for understanding. You're welcome. Absolutely. Some of this is framework dependent but it's more of a general problem. The system has no real state machine transitioning it from not done state to done state. And so the system shows that when to terminate is just best effort. Here we can see that the agents get stuck in a loop until they run out of turns or chances to answer the question. This was an open-ended question that is not necessarily based on facts. So having clarity on when to terminate is not trivial. However, the system answers with the same answer many times in a row which is a waste of not just the user's time, but also money. Setting max turns is a common service capability, and here we see why. But the fact that the agents use the max turns is really the problem here, and it's a problem that a good platform can help solve for users. This is an interesting example because there are multiple errors here. In the first one, it's stuck in a loop like the previous example. Second, the LLM response didn't provide the name of the third pick, but the checking user proxy did check for that. Number three, the chat manager isn't supposed to go back to the user proxy without doing something different. It just keeps on saying the same thing again and again. And fourth, the information LLM picked the first three picks, R1 through three, but the checking user proxy missed that. So what helps you gain visibility into these types of issues and resolve them? Our team has been thinking about how we make this easy for developers through tooling. You can use Azure AI Studio or the Promflow SDK to capture traces during development of your application. The way you do this is by annotating your key functions with the add trace decorator from the Promflow SDK, and this is on top of your existing code. This is going to enable you to see a really nice local and cloud debugging experience that we're going to look at next. The instrumentation that is being emitted are open telemetry spans and events that enable you to trace any call. So what really helps you gain visibility into these types of issues and address them? Our team has been thinking about how we make this easy for developers through tooling. You can use Azure AI Studio or the Promflow SDK to capture traces during development of your application. The way you do this is by annotating your key functions with the add trace decorator from the Promflow SDK. And this is on top of your existing code, as you can see. This is going to enable you to see a really nice local and cloud debugging experience. The instrumentation that is being emitted are open telemetry spans and events that enable you to trace any call. This enables you to log, 
save and monitor these workflows, which is the first and most critical step to debugging. Here are two features of the tool that are pretty powerful. The first is a local chat UI that you can interact with. You can take code on your laptop and chat with it using a local chat front end with tracing built in, meaning that I can start testing before I've even built the front end of my application. In the second image, you see the details of the execution of the application. It gives you details of all of the function calls, including their inputs and outputs. You can enable tracing on any application, from simple LLM calls to RAG, function calling, or single or multi-agent workflows. If you need more details, you would just add the add trace annotation to your code. After you understand how your application works, you'll need more tools to make it better. Applications with LLMs can be unpredictable, as we saw. They might make stuff up, uh, they might get things wrong or ramble back and forth, which can lower your application's quality. People often want to test different models or change parameters to see which combination makes their application the most accurate, affordable, and fastest. Azure AI Studio has tools for evaluating how well your LLM app is doing. It has built-in metrics for things like safety, how grounded in facts are the answers, how relevant they are, and how similar they are to what you need, helping you make sure the application does what you want it to do. But these general checks aren't always enough for every unique scenario. That's why a lot of developers define their own evaluators to meet their specific needs. Lastly, to provide a more accurate reflection of the system's behavior and effectiveness across a range of conditions, you should be able to test with many different situations. With AI Studio, you can do this kind of large-scale testing to help ensure your application is the best that it can be. To recap, we just saw how you can run a few queries at a time and see how the system works through debugging and tracing tools. Then we talked about using evaluators that let us in aggregate see how the application is performing and improve it. This gives you the tools to get your application in production. When you check it into production, all of the unit tests that everyone has checked in across your group are going to be run, and you can include the LLM evalu evaluators as a part of that. These tools can be fully integrated into your CI CD processes, and you can use your standard Azure DevOps or GitHub processes for check in. It will validate that everything is working. After deploying these solutions to production, it's critical to maintain continuous monitoring. This means that checking both the details of each individual request, as well as the system as a whole, to make sure that there's no drift. By utilizing OpenTelemetry, we enable prompt flow tracing to integrate with Azure Monitor and Application Insights. And these are tools that developers are already familiar with. Lastly, safety is on top of mind for each phase of the product lifecycle. Azure AI Content Safety addresses new harms and safety risks that are introduced by large language models. Especially, we have new features to identify and prevent attempted jailbreak and identify when LLMs generate material that leverages third-party intellectual property or harmful content. What it does is it filters out content both from the user input as well as the output of the application, and you have control over how that filtering works. To wrap us up, let's talk about what's around the corner. We're seeing more and more models with multimodalities. The complexity of our tooling must scale accordingly. It's essential that developers gain an understanding of accountability across various co content types, whether it's discerning responsibility of spoken words, images, or even videos. When it comes to ensuring responsible content delivery, cloud-based solutions can be useful. These systems can help analyze endpoints across different modalities, providing feedback on their adherence to responsible standards. For example, with the emergence of services that are capable of generating music, the challenge of content originality comes into play. Developers will need tools that can accurately assess the uniqueness of content, distinguishing it from copyrighted material. For example, determining the degree of similarity to a Taylor Swift song. To stay ahead, we need tools that facilitate debugging, evaluation, and application improvement across multimodal applications. These tools must be designed with foresight, keeping in mind the ever-changing requirements our customers have. Thank you so much for your time today.